Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. My name is Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie, and author of We've Got Tonight, the Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. That's right, folks. Back again for some more cocktails and rocktails. And I, as always, I want to thank everybody for being so awesome, for tuning in, for subscribing, for really having great conversations and being so cool and supportive. It's really great to meet you guys. I just, sorry, I burped. <laughs> I filmed like, I've been trying to film this one for like five times and I keep messing up. So deal with it. I burp because cocktails. And today, speaking of cocktails, like I said, we're going to the grunge era. We are still going to be in Salt Lake City. It's about 1991. I'm going to say September. I don't have a pass for this because it was a smaller club show with one of the biggest, the biggest band of the grunge era with Pearl Jam and Eddie Vedder and anybody who knows my early vlogs and a couple stories. Really, Eddie Vedder? Really? I always say that because the grunge guys are like, we weren't into groupies in all their interviews. Really, Eddie Vedder? And a few others. Owen from My Sister's Machine. Hey, Owen. And all the other bands, because I hung out with all the other grungy bands, too. Everybody loves a good groupie. Don't let them. Oh, and today for the cocktail rocktail, we are going to do Pearl Jam. So, everybody grab your jammies, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktail rocktail, shall we, folks? Cheers, big ears. Mmm, this is real good. It's just like orange vodka, orange juice, a couple other things. Recipe is down in the description. All right, guys. So this is going to be, like I said, 1991 on Pearl Jam's very first tour. This is right after they were really formed. When Pearl Jam first came along, they were called Mookie Blaylock because they're all big basketball fans. And uh, Mookie Blaylock came along and said, no, you can't use my name for your band, folks change it. So Eddie Vedder came along, Pearl Jam happened. And this is, I'd already been to Seattle the first time. This is after we had, uh, Danny and I had come back from Seattle. So we knew a few of the grunger guys. We knew Stone Gossard and Jeff Amet and stuff from PPU and hanging out around in Seattle that first time. So we'd come back down to Salt Lake City after a roundabout way. Ended up, you know, was in New Mexico for a while. Came back to Salt Lake City. Well, Pearl Jam was playing this little club downtown called Deviate. And once again, I do plan on um, doing a midweek Rocky Talkie with all the different venues around Salt Lake City. Most of them are gone right now or changed, but I'll do my best. I know I've been promising for a while, but I really will do it now that I'm moved, settled in. So, and this is, if, if you watch my vlog... Um, on the Marriott and stuff, the hotels. The Marriott Hotel was right here, and Deviate was literally half a block right across the street. Like, all the cool places were downtown. So Pearl Jam comes into town. They were not in town the night before, so it was, uh, I believe it was Kristen and I and Danny. Was it Kristen? I know Danny for sure. And I think Kristen was there. I'll have to ask her. I've got to get her on to an episode. Her and Danny. We've been talking about it. So anyway, um, we go to the show during the day, get on the bus, say, hey, you know, knock on the bus door and be like, hi. I'm like, hey, I know you guys from Seattle from, oh yeah, we remember you. How you doing, girl? Good. How are you? Why don't you guys come on the bus? Ladies, the usual sisters, because that was our nickname from the grunge guys. Because we used to, they joked around, they're like, God, you guys are just like sisters. We're like, yeah, everybody says that. And when they were like, oh, the sisters are coming. Which sisters? The usual sisters, you know, the Salt Lake City girls. The Salt Lake City sisters. And that's kind of how this nickname, because we had nicknames just like everybody else. The seven of these girls who made up their own nicknames, by the way. We didn't. You know, we had the Salt Lake City Welcoming Committee. Then we had the Usual Sisters, which was our grunge nickname, and the Salt Lake City Sisters kind of came out of, you know, Kristen and I had Lieutenant Lust and Captain Love from Def Leppard. But, so the Usual, so they're like, yeah, the Usual Sisters, cool, how you doing? Hey, can you get weed? Hell yeah, we can get you some weed. So we're hanging out. I hadn't really met Eddie Vedder. I had met the guys when they were more mother and love bone, because the first time I was in Seattle, 
that happened. Grunge was just being born. We were at the show where Alice in Chains got signed to their major debut record. We were there while it was all being made. So the first time we were in Seattle, grunge was just happening. Pearl Jam hadn't even happened yet. It did what, you know, obviously. So I had not met Eddie Vedder yet. And the guys are still doing interviews that, oh, you know, it was so anti 80s butt rock, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It was like, we're serious musicians, and you know, we just love to tour and rock out. Yeah, with your cocks out, with the groupies, like every other fucking musician does. So, really, any better? That's where that comes from, and I haven't done it for a while, but. So, we're hanging out. Eddie sits down next to me, and he's this really cute kind of. He plays shy, but he's not shy. He's just being cautious, and he's feeling you, feeling you out. He sits down next to me, and Jeff and everybody's like, oh, yeah, these, this is the usual sisters. They used to hang out with us in Seattle, blah, 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 at the scene up there. And he's all, hey, nice to meet you. You know, because we told him, no, we came back down to Salt Lake. And he was kind of, Eddie was being that kind of shy, kind of biting on his nail a little bit while he's talking to me. But you can tell his little blue eyes are... Big, beautiful blue eyes are just sparkly. And his little sweet, soft lips. And he just kind of did this little thing on the bus. And like I've said before, when a rock star puts his hand on your knee or puts his arm around you or starts getting extra flirty, that's his way of tagging you. You are tagged and backed at that point. Pretty much. So Eddie does, you know, the sly. Because, you know, rock stars are just like normal guys. They're going to try and do that little reach around, put the arm around, you know. Oh, can I get the booby? Later. <laughs> but so he kind of did that, did this little, kind of put his arm around me and started putting his little head on my shoulder. And I was like, oh, he's so cute. And he was just that, that little sweet little boy cuteness that he has. Totally. Hook, line, and sinkered me all the way. So, oh God, sorry guys. So we're sitting there. I just realized that my microphone is unplugged. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me better? I'm not as, I don't know, maybe I'm more filtered. I don't know if the microphone makes a difference, but anyway. So Eddie's kind of leaning his head into me and he's being real flirty and cute and he's looking up at me with those big blue eyes. Oh, you know, I was like, dude, I'm a groupie. You know, we're tagged and bagged as it is, but really, I'm tagging and bagging you. But he actually tagged and bagged me. So we're hanging out, and they got to go in for sound check, and Eddie's doing sound check, and he's kind of like, come with me, come with me. So he grabs my hand, drags me off the bus. Danny and everybody's still on there. He's like, we got to go in and do sound check. He's like, come on, come with me. So he just grabs me. We go off the bus, and when you walk in, there's the down... Um, uh, downstairs part with the bar and stuff right here. The stage is back here and then you go up there's another backstage area and then upstairs is where the actual dressing room and real backstage is and then upstairs there's another bar and a whole balcony area that comes around and you can watch the show comfortably from up there because this will come into play later. So anyway we go in and Eddie's dragging me upstairs, and he's like, no, being such a sweet little gentleman, opening doors, can I get you water, anything from the bar, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm fine, just the water's good, you know. So we're waiting for the bar, and he's all leaning, and he's just, you know how guys lean in, and their little eyes sparkle, and he's just listening. And he just decides, and he keeps just sort of leaning in, keeps getting closer, and then he just grabs me and just gives me the sweetest softest little kiss just this kind of lingering very sweet almost felt like innocent boy it almost made me feel like this was a first kiss and it was a first kiss but like you know that you just gave me that first kiss type of thing and that's how Eddie made me feel so it was really awesome and he's like I like you and I'm like I kind of like you too so we were just hanging out the rest of the band Danny and Kristen come in and Danny had met her musician boyfriend from L.A. a few weeks before. So she ends up taking off during the show to go a block away down to another nightclub that we always used to hang out at that had a lot of really good shows. 
um, thrift parties for Kristen and I's last two weeks in Salt Lake City, which I'll vlog about. But so she goes down to the Zephyr Club, meets up with that musician. So Kristen and I stay there. We go upstairs to the dressing room. We're hanging out. The guys got to get ready because, you know, you got to give them time to get ready, get their little rock star going on. And he was being so cute the way he'd come up behind me and just grab me from behind and stuff and just, okay, I'll see you in a bit. And he would give me a little kiss on the shoulder or something. And okay, cool. And at the time, Eddie was known for climbing. Like he would climb any venue he played, whether it was the lighting trusses or whether it was the wall of the club. And this was what he would do later on this night. So Kristen and I are upstairs. There's a few other people I know from high school. Hey, Paula. And she, Paula will vouch for this story because she even reminded me about it sometimes. Not that I could forget because I adored Eddie Vedder and saw him a few times. So so we're upstairs. We're talking to Paula and her ex-husband, piece of shit, rocker wannabe from our high school. And um, uh, just talking and Pearl Jam is playing. So I'm standing, you know, the it's kind of a U shape and I'm looking, I'm standing in the bottom of the U looking at the stage. And there's security guards going, and I st stand up on the, uh, it was about yay wide, the countertop of the balcony area. So I stand up and I just sort of sit down and kick my legs over the balcony and I'm just sort of watching and Eddie sees me and he's like, that's it, that's it. And they're doing a long, you know, during Jeremy, they're doing that long jam session part and Eddie throws the microphone over his shoulder and starts climbing up the wall and he kind of comes around to this other area where there's some uh, railing. So he pulls himself up from the stage doing one of his climbing things. And the security's like, you gotta move, you gotta move, move it. And he even called me bitch. He's like, move bitch. And I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I don't have to go anywhere. Right, Eddie Vedder? So Eddie comes running around and he stops the security guard. Like he comes running on the countertop. Cause at this point I had stood up, like he's trying to, and I'm like, whoa, he's like, I'm like, let me get up by myself. I'm like, get your hands off of me. So I stand up on the countertop and Eddie comes running over and he looks at the security guards like, Hey, get your hands off of her. He's like, she's with me. And the security guards like, Whoa. Okay. I'm like, and you should know me by now, motherfucker. You kicked us out with tool during the, uh, Lana Paloozas and Alice in Chains <laughs> motherfuckers. See those grungy boys do love their groupies. At least the good ones. Anyway, so Eddie saves me, and as my friend Paula put it, next thing I know, Eddie just grabs your hand and goes running off with you back to the dressing room, <laughs> which he did, and he just wanted to make sure I was okay. So he keeps singing Jeremy on his microphone. He's kind of got it. He still has this microphone, and he comes running out. I go back out with him. You know, we make out for a minute. He comes, and he drops back down onto the stage, does a little flip off the, not like a flip, but kind of swings down, kind of type flip from the railing by the backstage door security guys didn't fuck with me the rest of the night but this is a night where overzealous drunk ass motherfucking frat boy fans oh i hate those front row joes so after the show we're hanging out they wanted some more weed we were we were in my car smoking weed so it was uh jeff stone eddie me Kristen and Danny was still down at Zephyr so we were going to go down to Zephyr and meet with them we were still waiting for my guy to come with some more weed because we just didn't get enough apparently because we're all potheads obviously so anyway so, <laughs> so anyway as we get in my car the guys you know they had already signed some autographs outside the tour bus and we're just going to smoke in the car for some reason. The tour bus was going back to the hotel for the guys who wanted to go back to the hotel. And we were still going to hang out. And as we're getting in my car, there's a couple frat boys from the, you know, little, like, wrestling team kind of frat boys. Mm -hmm. So they're all trying to get the guys. They see us get into the car. And they realize it's Pearl Jam. So they start knocking on the door. Knocking on the door. They're, hey, can we get your autograph? And, you know, they're sitting there like, no thanks. And Eddie's in the front seat. He's like, man, not right now. He's like, we got to go. And he rolls up the window. Well, Mr. Front Row Joe Frat Boy decides he's not having that. So he takes his arm and he punches 
the back window where Jeff, I believe Jeff Ahmet was sitting there, or it was Mike McCready. Mike was with us in the car. It was Mike, Stone, Danny, or not Danny, Kristen, Eddie, and me. So he punches my car window and shatters it. Just mother fucking shatters it and at that second there happens to be a cop going by and the window's down and you see me get out of the car you, you just break my window you motherfucker so that cop you just hear that cop screech and flip around and there he is pulls over so what's going on here ladies and he, we all get out of the car, and Eddie was like, Eddie got real feisty. Like, he jumped out of the car. He's like, what the fuck did you do? Because he was being real protective. And, you know, the Rock Boys are all protective. They're such incredibly chivalrous. There's a lot of men in this world that can learn from the Rock Boys. For the chivalry, respect, how to treat a lady. So, they were, you know, and this frat boy's trying to punch Eddie Vedder. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And I'm getting between him and Eddie. I'm like, no, you don't fucking. So the cop just comes over. He's like, what's going on here, guys? And the frat boys just freeze. And they're like, yeah, he just broke her window. And we told him what happened because they didn't want to sign the autograph. So he punched my window and broke it. So that cop not only arrested him for attempted assault, he made him pay me that money for the hotel, for that window replacement, the insurance, which was about $100 deductible. He gave, and I told him that. I said it's a hundred dollar deductible on my insurance at the time. So he made that frat boy give me a hundred dollars right then and there, and we signed the papers. Frat boy went to jail. And Eddie Vedder, oh, he was so sweet. He could finally protect me. Sweet little innocent boy was now, oh, sweet little caring man, and I played right into his hands. <laughs> oh, I need you to hold me all night long, Eddie. Oh, Eddie Vedder. I loved the way he kissed. He was such a good kisser. So we go down to the Zephyr, meet up with Danny and the guy that she had met and stuff and enjoy the rest of our night. Yeah, we were joking around about, you know, the broken glass and the frat boy and it kind of put a damper in the mood for a few minutes. But once we went in the back alley and refreshed with the weed, we were all good to go. And Eddie and I stayed up. He came home with me to my place because they were still sharing rooms at the time. Like I said, Pearl Jam was just playing playing clubs at the time. They weren't even like, they were just coming out. Like they were just having their big hits and not even on an arena tour yet. So really great time to see Pearl Jam, to be a part of grunge, to be able to see it, you know, start coming to life and coming to the rest of the world from the first time we went to Seattle to being a part of it in Salt Lake City as well. It was so awesome and so awesome to be with a guy who was just so sweet, so caring, and pretty fucking good in bed. We'll talk about that. And for everybody who's on my Patreon, um, I am tr still trying to figure it out. I've got a couple things I'm going to post for you guys over there next week. Well, it's December 9th today, so next week being next week. This will probably be later. But I thank you for the support for the time. I've kind of not been doing anything anything over there because I'm really trying to figure out what it is you want. So if there's stuff that you want me to do over on Patreon, please put it down in the comments. I would love to get your inputs. I'm trying to make it more of a live rock and roll when I go backstage and stuff, but all the shows... I keep wanting to go to keep getting canceled because of certain social issues. Anyway, so yeah, that's where uh, I first hooked up with Eddie Vedder and found out what a really great guy he is. I loved him cuddling me all night in my bed and it was so sweet. And then we met with the rest of the band and everybody the next morning for breakfast at Denny's. Sent them on their little happy grunge way. And so, for those of you who think the Grunge Boys don't like groupies, the fuck they don't. And that's why, really, Eddie Vedder, I'm sorry, I just burped again. <laughs> oh, I drank too many cocktails while filming. So, anyway, thanks again, you guys, for listening to my little Eddie Vedder story. There is more to come with him. There's more to come with a lot of the different rockers. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And don't forget that 60 it's now 60% of you who are not subscribed. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, promote me. 
we're, we want to make this into a series. This book, Our Lives, would be a great series. And I say ours because if it becomes a series, it's not just about my stories anymore. Mm -mm. No, you guys get to hear Danny and Kristen and Davini and Andrea and Crazy Lisa and everybody else's stories. And they expand in 12 different, dif different directions with even more rockers. And more sides of the story. So who does, doesn't want that? Who wouldn't love even more of these kinds of stories? I know I would. So hit that subscribe button. Let's get me out there. Let's all work together towards this. Because I, I can't even tell you how much I love and appreciate all the effort everybody puts in. So thank you guys. So hit that subscribe to the 60 percenters who don't subscribe but watch me. Hit my bells. Hit the share. And we will see you next week for some more Cocktails and Rocktails. Cheers, big ears.